for looking. No, glass. I mean, I guess, I guess I'll share that. You know, I know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and it was, um, it was uh, the song "Deep River City," mm-hmm. and you know, I think like, you know, some of my perspective towards healthcare is guided by being a doctor, but a lot of it is guided actually by the fact that you know, I was diagnosed with terminal leukemia. I, it obviously wasn't terminal, so I'm I'm fine now. But a lot of it is about like from being a patient and seeing both mm-hmm. sides of the healthcare industry. Wow. And I never went to the same hospital as a patient that I had worked in as a doctor. Mm-hmm. And I think there was sort of a reason for that. And maybe that's that speaks to something. So I remember that, the, you know, and I always felt like after I had come back from that terminal diagnosis that, you know, I was given a spe- second chance and it was very special. Mm-hmm. And I had to really make life meaningful. And so I thought about the deep you know, revelations of physics and the sciences Mm -hmm. and how that should inform, you know, philosophically the way we live our lives. And one of the things that kind of guided me through that was the black hole theory wars, which Mm -hmm. is, I think, the story that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. which was the decades long theoretical debate between Stephen Hawking and Leonard Susskind. And it's kind of a long story, so I won't I won't tell the whole story. We have a long time here. You can tell the whole story. (laughs) I am interested in the whole story. (laughs) Well, I I think what came out of their debate was there, there were happens when something falls into a black hole it was you know can it be um you know do, does you ever lose the information from the universe mm-hmm. and so what they uncovered in their debate and it was a true story it was um, a law of the universe so fundamental mm-hmm. that it had been overlooked by every preceding scientist mm-hmm. and i don't know why this law isn't a bigger tenet of philosophy now but it's it, the idea is the conservation of information mm-hmm. And so what we realized is that even when you throw something into a black hole, you can never erase the narrative of what it is or the path that it's taken throughout its existence. Mm -hmm. Even on the event horizon of the black hole, there's a sort of binary information matrix that will in some way preserve the information of what it swallows for all time. Mm -hmm. And what they realized is the laws of the black hole are the same as the laws of the universe. So that means that even though we think of ourselves as very infinitesimal beings that flicker in and out of existence in instants that are so small and so instantaneous that you can barely say that they even happen, there's still something about our lives, our existences, our narratives, our identities that's forever indelibly and inextricably written into the fabric of the universe for all time. So that was a very powerful idea to me. And that that was one of the things that sort of, uh, to answer your early question, that's one of the things that kind of, you know, moved me to get passionate about it, expressing myself mm-hmm. as, you know, as in music and, and in art and in, in philosophy as well. Mm-hmm. Is that idea of the, the law of conservation of information, that what we do while we're here feels like it's very brief. It feels like it's very ephemeral, mm-hmm. but it does matter. And there is something about it that in a very real and physical way is permanent. <sighs> My gosh. Do you write poetry? You should have just wrote that down. I know there's a lot of science in there and and maybe a lot of people tune out. And you know what? All the less for them.